All right, welcome back to New Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we are gonna look at beat detection once again. And I know we have done that before, but this is actually a new technique and a way more accurate one. And I think there is a little uh, juicy trick in there that's gonna be interesting for you to learn. So basically you can go ahead and use this component right away. You can download that on my Patreon, the link is in the description, and it gives you a bit more stuff to work with, like info about the song. Basically, I kind of use this as a drag and drop instead of using, like I don't use this audio file in anymore. I don't use the audio analysis. I just drop this into my network and I get all the stuff that I need, basic things for working with audio. I can also turn on my level and spectrum here. I can also output my spectrum. So everything's kind of pre-made. So you can go ahead and download that. What we're going to be focusing on in this video is only this part. So basically the audio analysis of the, the kick or the lows, snare or mids and the hi hats or highs. You can also obviously always use the audio analysis that you can find here under tools and just drag into your network as you probably have done before. But I don't actually like this much, uh, neither the way you can control this here nor the output, so I don't think it's very accurate. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So basically, if I turn on the output volume, so this is an old uh, random song that I made to evade um, copyright problems. You can see it really nicely even detects highs, right? So I think it's pretty powerful. Right, so instead of rebuilding this, so actually just quickly, this is what it looks like from the inside, but we're gonna focus on this part. And uh, it might look intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. So yeah, this is the network we're gonna be building. This is gonna be the output. Let's go. So I'm gonna delete everything except for this. So uh, I've got an audio file in where I have the both the original standard file, I've got an audio device out connected to it so we can listen to this for the unteenth time and I can uh, turn it on to this and I've got my uh, keyboard in with key set to 2 connected to my pulse here so if I press 2 on my keyboard and again this is already integrated and you can select the key here into the uh, component. This is a really good, nice way I think to work with also when we're generally working with audio files and an audio project that you can really nicely reset to whatever like juicy interesting <laughs> part of the track that you want to be working with. So I've set it to 83 seconds because that's where the beat starts. So I can start it there anytime. Cool but I'm gonna be uh, working with the default audio. So let me bypass that so we don't have to listen to it. I'm gonna add a math and I'm gonna combine the channels by average as we've done before because uh, I just wanna have the left and the right, right? Like left and right uh, merged into one mono channel. And then I'm gonna add an audio spectrum as we have also done before. On my audio spectrum, I wanna change the FFT size to the highest, it's like 16 something K. I'm going to go up with the higher frequency boost, even though I don't think that actually makes a difference. We don't want to use logarithmic scaling, but frequency, which is a more accurate output, actually. The cool thing is, if we leave this to match length to frequency, the thing is that now our samples represent our frequency. So uh, we have a frequency range here between 0 and 22,050, which is kind of the hertz range that we want to be working with. So that now enables us to add a trim chop. And on the trim chop, we can set this to absolute. And then, for example, I can set this to 50 by 300. And now that means that we actually only have the frequency range between 50 and 300 hertz because samples equals frequency. Uh, we got samples here, so that means that we got that frequency range. Simple as that. You can change this to whatever you like. This is just uh, for the kick right now. So this is kind of where the kick usually hits the most, but obviously there's also, it's not that simple and there's more frequencies than just the lows for a kick, for example, but this is what we're gonna be working with now. Feel free to adjust. We can add an analyze as well, or we should. <laughs> and that will give us uh, the, the one sample average of all of these 250 samples. So this is something that you might be already familiar with that you've done before. But now what we want to do is actually 
use a lag in combination with a slope. And the slope is really the main interesting part here. So I'm going to do a bit of an excursion to show you how that slope works. So I'm going to add a constant and a filter and a slope. And then I'm going to add that to a trail. Actually, I'm going to add uh, this to a trail and then, then this to a trail. So I'm, I'm just using the filter, maybe with like 0.5. So this is, this is just temporary, right? We're going to do differently. But let me show you. So what the slope is doing, basically it's looking for how fast the input channel is changing. If it's changing going from lower to higher, then that's going to be output as an upward movement in the slope and the other way around. So let me just show you. If I move this up from 0 to 1, you can now see it moved from 0 to 1. And now the slope also moved up because it showed, okay, right now it's changing fast and then it stops changing. So if we now go down, it now like showed us, okay, now the value changed quickly downwards, right? So this is a really like, this is basically showing the slope, what it's doing. It's very simple. And we want to use that now on our hits from the kick. So if we go ahead and delete this for now, we can add a lag. Which I'm going to bypass and a slope and then I'm going to add trail from here and put that into the second input. What we want to be looking at here right now we can see okay there's hits here and here and here and wherever there is a hit we also get a like upward movement in the slope and then it moves down quickly again so the also the slope moves down quickly. So actually this might not seem like much of an improvement actually it kind of seems like it's worse than before. So that's where the lag now comes in. So let me move this down one step and put this into the second input. Usually we're using the lag as a, kind of as a filter, right, to smooth out the signal. But actually in this case, I just want to set this to zero and we're interested in the slope. So I'm going to clamp the slope. So if we just use the default values one and one, you can see it slightly changes, but it's not really like helping us that much. You, you, you can see a difference also in the output of the slope. But what we're mainly interested in here is that we want to have a strong input slope. So like this moves up a lot when there is a kick hitting and a low output slope. So we're actually not showing a strong like downward movement when the hit is over basically. So I'm going to do one and point uh, two and point one here. And now you can see what we get is a really nice clean output here. So let me turn on the sound. And like this uh, lag uh, channel here looks pretty funky, right? It's just like a very strong hit, like a very fast upward movement and a very slow outward movement. And that that's why it results in this very clean slope output. So you can already see like the huge difference between our original just analyze uh, average channel and our sloped channel, right? So you can already see this is something much nicer to work with. So now we can uh, go further with this. So first off, obviously, you can now play around with the uh, max slope here. So you can add a stronger input max slope or uh, like a, a weaker output, whatever, right? Just mess around with these values to kind of get a sense of how this works. But for the kick, I found these to work really well. Obviously, you could also lag it or even use the overshoot. Just mess around with this. But again, I found this to work well as it is. So now I'm going to add a math afterwards and I'm going to call this math gain. And on my mold add, I'm just going to multiply it by two. And so this is basically the gain for the kick. We're going to copy the entire network here. Uh, several times. So we have that also for the snare and the hats. And you might want to adjust the gain based on what element you're working with. Next step I want to do is because you can see it's actually kind of in starting at minus 0.2. And if you look here, it's also moving above one. So what I can do to to have a nicer range is use a limit, change this to clamp zero and one. And now if I put that into here, you can see this value is actually nicely working between zero and one. And then the next step is that, so this is a value that we can already work with as is. We could use that and export it on some kind of parameter, but there is another thing we can do. So I'm going to add a switch actually, and then a second chain here. And then I'm going to do trigger and put that into the switch. Let's change the switch to index one because we want to use the trigger, but I also want to be able to use 
the original channel without the trigger. That's why I added the switch. So now you've got to find the threshold value, which for the kick is pretty high. I'm going to set it to 0.9. And you can see it. This doesn't look very clean. So what I can do is I can go to attack, turn these off, go to sustain, turn these off, and then set the sustain level to 1. And instead of this one, let's input that one. And let's also uh, just output a null here. And yeah, so you can see this is a very uh, nice and clean input value. So you might want to adjust the trigger threshold so it really picks up every kick. So you can see it kind of drops that one kick sometimes. So you might want to also adjust the uh, uh, input gain here. So it's really about finding a balance between the gain and the threshold. So these really work well together. So we could also color these red. So we know these are actually like super important. There's a few more things I want to add here. So one being just a simple rename. So we're going to call this kick. So we know which, which channel we're working with. I'm also then going to add a merge because we want to add the other channels in a second. And then we also might want to add a trail just to see uh, what we're working with. So again, I might want to use a different uh, different song so you can yeah and the cool thing about this is that it's kind of independent of the bass so there might be a, a bass right like a kick drum and then a, and a bass and that bass as you can as you probably often have experienced especially with uh, our uh, default file is that the the normal audio analysis picks up the bass as well and we just want to have the kick so this is actually working really well with that all right let's keep on going we just need to copy and paste uh, this part between trim and rename i'm going to copy and paste that here and let's get rid of that trail for here i will want to use a different uh, frequency range so i'm going to go with 2500 by 4500 again you can use a different one this is just a uh, pretty typical for the snare for the lag i'm gonna change it to actually here i wanted to use 0.2 as an output and here i want to use 0.1 but yeah feel free to adjust as you like I don't know how many times I've said that now. And for the gain, um, yeah, I usually want to go with two for the kick and three for the snare. But again, like if you look at the component that I built here that you can technically also rebuild, you, we get the gain here and you can you can adjust that or you usually do adjust that also based on the track. Of course, every, every track is different. So I'm going to rename this snare and just merge that here. And now... Now you can see that we get a really nice snare hit. We might have to adjust the uh, threshold here. Yeah, we might also. <laughs> so that's kind of it. Uh, let's just do the same thing again. Copy paste. And I'm going to change it to 8000 by 15000. And I'm going to change the lag to 5 and 2. So I found this to work well with the highs. And then for the gain, I want to go all the way up to 10. And also the trigger, usually I want this to be lower for the kick. So maybe I'm going to go with 0.3. Then I'm going to call this hats, put that into my merge. And now you can see it picks up the hats. So in this case, actually, it doesn't even pick up all the hats. So we might want to go down with the threshold or we have to go up with the gain maybe to 12 again as i said it's a it's a very much a game between balancing these two values so i might also want to go to my math here uh, in the beginning and go to mold add so this is kind of you can think of it as the global gain so if you've noticed that it's hard for the whole system here to pick up any kind of inputs, then you might want to either increase or decrease this number. So it could be like two or three. So it, maybe it picks up the values better. So again, I'm going to show you with the other file. And you can really nicely see it here. So this is a very straight hat, right? And it picks up perfectly every hat there. And for the snare, it kind of feels like it's picking up almost too many. So we might want to go up with the threshold. 
just adjust <laughs> to whatever you need, right? One last thing is that we might want to add some lagging here. So I could add a lag here, or it could also be a filter. So, so basically we're filtering out uh, the output here. You could also kind of achieve the same thing if we don't use a lag, but go to trigger and adjust attack and uh, sustain. So for example, we could add a release. Then you can see it kind of fades out the kick, right? And again, we could switch to, um, for example, like w I want to show you with the, uh, maybe with the hats, if we go down here. And actually with the gain so high, it's very hard to see. Maybe if we go down with the gain. You can kind of see instead of it being like a value between zero and one always, it kind of picks up on the differences of each hit hat because usually with most songs, the hat isn't like with every hit, it's not the, the same volume, right? So we might want to uh, kind of see that difference uh, output in our in our actual visual or however we're using this. So in that case, we might want to not use the trigger, right? But yeah, again, really, it's uh, the main thing here. The juicy part is the slope and the lag. I'm very happy I found out about this. And again, you can get this uh, already pre-made component on my Patreon. I'm very happy if you support me there. Thanks deeply to everybody who already is supporting me there. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I'll see you on the next video.